Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have an improper integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times e to the negative x squared dx. And this week I wanted to focus on solving improper integrals for you because they're very tricky for students, especially because you have to use your limit laws that maybe you have to brush up from Calc 1 days. So this one's doubly improper because the lower limit is negative infinity and the upper limit is positive infinity. So how to proceed, we're going to split this up into two integrals and you can choose to split it up at any number between negative infinity and infinity where the integrand is well defined. Otherwise, we'd have to split it up some more. But thankfully, uh, exponential functions, their domains are real numbers. Here's a polynomial, same thing. So pick anybody between negative infinity and infinity. And typically we pick zero, okay? So we're gonna rewrite this as the integral from negative infinity to zero of x e to the negative x squared dx plus, and then I have to pick up where I left off, so zero to infinity, and then again, x e to the negative x squared dx, all right? I'm gonna call this integral number one, and then integral number two, we're gonna do them separately. All right, let's focus on integral number one. That is integral from negative infinity to zero, x e to the negative x squared dx. Absolute very first thing you need to do is replace that lower limit of negative infinity with the dummy variable and rewrite the improper integral as a limit. That's the first thing you do. Don't even think about, ooh, how am I gonna integrate it? Mm -mm, not yet. So usually you can use T, A, S, up to you. I'm just gonna say let's rewrite it using T for now. So T goes to negative infinity, and then now that lower limit's replaced with T to zero, and then I have X E to the negative X squared DX. All right, now we can start focusing on how will we evaluate this integral? What technique do I need? Well, I'm looking, the exponent is negative x squared, and then I have its derivative sitting out front, right? x to the first. So u sub should do it, and we won't need to do any other techniques afterwards. And it's up to you if you want to include the negative in the u sub or not. I'm not going to, but you can try it again and put it in there and see how you like it better. I like it better not. So I'm going to let u equal just x squared, and then du is 2x dx, which is almost exactly what I have there. 1 half du is x dx. All right, so then we can rewrite everything now. Still keep writing lim as t goes to negative infinity every step of the way. Don't dump that. Also, u is equal to x squared, so I need to change these limits to be in terms of u. So I'm going to square both of them. My new lower limit is now t squared, and my new upper limit stays 0. How convenient. Okay. Then here, x dx, here's x dx is equal to 1 half du, so 1 half du, and then I'm going to have e to the negative u. Remember, I didn't let u equal negative x squared, only x squared. Why? I just like it better. All right, very good. Now we can evaluate this integral. Antiderivative of e to the negative u would be negative e to the negative u. And I'm just going to keep the 1 half and still write lim. So we have lim, t goes to negative infinity. Taking the negative out, I'm taking the 1 half out, and then I'm going to evaluate e to the negative u from the limits t squared to 0. Very nice, very nice. Okay, let's see what's next. Limit, t goes to negative infinity, negative 1 half, e to the negative 0, that's just e to the 0, minus e to the negative t squared. And this limit won't be too difficult. We can just evaluate it right here within this problem. So e to the 0, that's just 1, minus, I'm going to give you a tip right now. If you're doing limits, you don't want negative exponents. 
because it's harder for your brain to kind of process what's going on. It adds an extra layer. It's great to have negative exponents when we're taking derivatives or integrals, but not right now, not for limit time. So I'm gonna rewrite it as one over e to the t squared, okay? So then maybe now you feel a little bit better. I certainly do. T is going to negative infinity. Where is T squared going? Mm -hmm. Very good. It's going to positive infinity, right? Okay. And then where would the whole denominator be going? So E raised to something getting very, very big. Remember the graph of E to the X. Yes, hopefully something like this. Yes, very crude graph, but that'll get the job done. So E is also going to be approaching infinity, positive infinity. So this whole denominator is approaching infinity. Well, what do we know when we have a constant in the numerator and the denominator is getting very, very large, approaching infinity? Where does this whole term go? Yes, the whole term approaches zero. So I'm just going to circle the whole thing and say, whoop, this guy goes to zero. So all I'm left with now in my limit is negative one-half times 1 minus 0, so this is just negative 1 half. Beautiful. Now we have to save this. We only evaluated the first part of our problem, the first half of the integral. Now I have to do the second half. Do you remember what the second half was? Yes. Let me copy it. And here we go. So similarly, I have to replace this upper limit with a dummy variable and take the limit as that variable goes to infinity. Let's see here, we can rewrite it as, what do you wanna use, A? We haven't used A. So this is gonna be limit as A goes to infinity, integral zero to A, X E to the negative X squared DX. Very nice. And then same u sub applies from before. So if you just wanna copy everything down, u was x squared, du was two x dx, do you remember? And then one half du was x dx. And here's x dx. Just don't forget, we have to also change our limits of integration. So this is limit, a goes to infinity, integral zero to, yes, a squared, one half, e to the negative u du. And then the rest of the problem falls into place similarly. So this is limit, a goes to infinity, antiderivative of e to the negative u would be negative e to the negative u. So I'll put the negative outside with the one half. Then I have e to the negative u evaluated from zero to a squared. Good. Then this is limit. A goes to infinity, negative one half times e to the negative a squared minus e to the zero. And then remember that hint I told you when you have a term with a negative exponent and you're trying to take limits, I would rewrite it in the denominator, get rid of the negative exponent. So limit a goes to infinity, negative one half times one over e to the a squared minus, that's one, very good. And then same reasoning as before. So a is going to infinity, that means a squared is going to infinity. In fact, this whole denominator is going to positive infinity. A constant over something getting big goes to zero. Yay, so now we have negative one half times zero minus one, which is positive one half. I don't really care what number I get, right, when I do these improper integrals. Just as long as the limit is, exists as a finite number, then the improper integral is convergent, okay? So this one was convergent because we got a finite number. Even if it was 2 billion and 42, that's great. That's finite. It, it would be convergent, okay? And then also this one is a finite number. They didn't have to be additive inverses. They didn't have to be plus or minus a half. That was just the way things worked out, okay? So I don't want you to feel like, oh, that has to always be, no. So now we can just summarize. The integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times e to the negative x squared dx, well, we know that this integral approaches negative 1 half plus 1 half, which is zero. 
which is a finite number, therefore the improper integral is convergent. All right? And I do want to say something important. You have to check that both integrals converge in order to answer the question. If one, for example, was divergent and the other one was convergent, game over. The divergent one always trumps and ruins everything for everybody, and it's just a divergent integral, okay? I mean, it's not bad if it diverges. I just feel like I'm a little disappointed when it happens. I don't know about you. So I have more improper integrals I would like to solve for you guys. If you have any requests, let me know. I'm going to be working through some of the homework problems and practice test problems that I'm assigning my Calc 2 class right now. And I hope everyone's doing well out there. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. What was the trickiest part for you? Or was it pretty straightforward? Because I have harder ones, but I thought, let's start off at a moderate level. If you need to review improper integrals or any Calc 2 topics, then check out the playlists that are on my YouTube channel. I've organized them by course. And you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, Math with Professor V. I love you all. I'll be back soon. Bye, guys.